let's just pray because I have a, uh, you know, I've been, I've been, God's been talking to me about this area. And um, I'm, I'm, I want to kind of, I don't know how far I'm going to get in it, but it's, it's a game changer. Uh, it's, it's the key that will un unlock the door of success. We all want to be successful, whether it's just personal success, whether it's relational success. And you definitely want to be in a relationship that's successful, whether it's professional success, whether it's just um, financially successful. We just spiritual success. We, there's such a desire to be successful. I mean, if you're in school, you want to be successful. And God gives us the key to that. And so I just want us to pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this time that we have with you. My prayer is that revelation knowledge would flow. God, you would open our eyes and open our ears to hear from you. That we would gain understanding of your plan and purposes and so that, God, we will not fail at life. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise, and everybody shout amen, amen, amen. Now, the last time I was here, you may be seated. I introduced to you an aspect and of God that is extremely important, but it's, it's overlooked. Yet it's, it's, it's so important in our lives, but yet it's overlooked. This thing, it will help you to be successful in every endeavor in life. I don't care what you set out to do. It will be the reason for your success. Professional success, spiritual success, relational success, kingdom success. Every testimony, hear me now, of victory and success in this kingdom is connected to this thing called favor. Somebody say favor. favor. This grace called favor is necessary for you and I to be great. The word great, we use it so much in the world, but we've got to take that word back and realize that God has called you and I, the church, to be great. Are you hearing me? And so in this year of fixed purpose, I want you to expect the favor of God in your life. You know, Paul wrote to the church in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. He says, as you have abound in everything, he says, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. Paul was talking to a church that was abounding in the grace or the favor of God on their life. They were having encounters with God in many areas where this grace is concerned. But Paul began to admonish them, see to it that you abound in this grace also. Now, Paul was talking here about the grace of giving. But what Paul is suggesting in this, that there are graces that are available to us that we may or may not be operating in. It's possible to operate in many of God's graces, many of God's favor on your life, and still there be some favor or some level of grace that you're not operating in. So Paul says, what do I do when there is a favor that I have not experienced? See to it. You see to it that you abound in that grace also. Somebody says amen. So this grace called favor is released because God wants to overwhelm us. He, he wants to overwhelm you with his goodness. He wants to overwhelm you and I with his kindness. And so because this is the God who, who wants to do what we saw take place with our teens, they, they were overwhelmed by God. 
he, he's, he wanted to overwhelm you. You're going to be overwhelmed in this world, but you get to choose what will overwhelm you. And God wants to overwhelm you to such a degree that you make the statement that we read in Psalms 118, verse 23. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in my eyes. I mean, if you have never been overwhelmed to such a degree that you shout up and say, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in my eyes. God wants to overwhelm you where you have that as a testimony in your life. You know, favor will make you the exception to the rule. Somebody say exception. In other words, it suggests what happens with others does not dictate or determine what will happen for me. Are you hearing me? You can't look at what happened to other people and come to the conclusion what's possible for me. Are you hearing me? You can't look at what happened to most people my age and say that's going to happen to me. You can't look at what happens to most people in my race and say that's going to happen to me. You can't look at what happened to most people in my family and say that's going to happen to me. You can't say what happens to most people in this city and say it's going to happen to me. You can't even look at the TV and hear the news, of what's going on in the news, and say what happened to most people on the news is going to happen to me. Why? Because the God that you and I serve is a God that orchestrates this thing called exception. Woo. Somebody say, he will make an exception to the rule. Because our God is the God who orchestrates exceptions. Are you hearing me? What is an exception? An exception is a personal thing that is excluded from a general statement. Are you hearing me? A case not conforming to the general rule. Here's what I love about it. An exception is when something happens that couldn't have happened, that shouldn't have happened, that wouldn't have happened if God didn't make you an exception. Are you hearing me? God is the God of the exception. The Bible is full of people who was an example that God is the God of an exception. You look at in the Bible, we read the story about a woman who gave birth in the 90s. Who do you know giving birth in their 90s? Women don't give birth in their 90s, but Sarah did. Why? Because God made her an exception. We read the story of, you know, Daniel in the lion's den, and Daniel goes in the den, and he comes out. And Daniel is not eaten in the lion's den because God made him a what? An exception. We read about the three Hebrew boys thrown in a fiery furnace. And the furnace is so hot, it killed those who threw them in. But the Bible said when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Because God is the God of the exception. We read the story of birds, ravens, feeding Elijah. You and I know that birds don't feed people. But we feed birds. But we read the story. I love this story. We read it in 1 Kings chapter 17. It says the ravens brought him, Elijah, bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. Woo, glory. And he drank from the brook. So birds don't feed people. People feed the birds. But with Elijah, God was making an, an exception. Are you hearing me? God is the God who makes an exception. Here's what I love about that story. God will change the nature of something to bless you. God knows how to take people who don't like you and make them like you. He can take a hater and make a hater bless you. He'll change the nature of a thing in order to bless you because God is the God of the what? Exception. That's called what? Favor. Are you hearing me? Somebody say favor. favor. I will... Make a taker be a giver. Ooh, glory. Now think about it. If God can do that for Sarah, 
If God can do that for Daniel, if God can do it for the three Hebrew boys, if God can do it for Elijah, then that means God can do it for us. And if you believe that there is a grace that's available called favor on your life and that God will do it for you, shout, I'm next. I'm next. Come on, give it three times. I'm next. I'm next to be a barrier breaker. I'm next to be the head. I'm next to be the lender, not to borrow. I'm next to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm next to see the realities of what God promised me to be seen. I am next. Why? Because the favor of God is on my life. Somebody shout, I'm next. Yes, that I feel about it. I'm next. Woo, glory. I don't know if you realize that you have been called and created to be an exception. Are you hearing me? I can say that because when you look at the words that in the Bible that define who you are, none of those words define you as normal. You can't find a word in the Bible that says you're average, ordinary. You, you just can't find. When you read the scriptures, the Bible says you are the light of the world. Woo, glory. You are chosen. You are peculiar. You are royal. You are above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You are the, you're the lender and not the borrower. You are as Jesus is. So are we in this world. Hallelujah. I need to remind you sometimes that you're not ordinary. I need to remind you, don't think ordinary. Don't talk ordinary. Don't act ordinary. You are not to be ordinary. Don't put yourself in a box because boxes are not for people. Boxes are for things. When the apostle Paul felt himself in a box, the Lord said to him, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For when you are weak, Sometimes in our weaknesses, we feel like what we cannot do. We feel like we can't accomplish things because of our weakness. But, but God said to Paul, when you are weak, then are you what? Strong. Tell somebody I'm strong. Paul got a revelation. He says, most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities. Glory in my weaknesses. Glory in it. Why? Because boxes are not made for man, they're made for things. And Paul says, let the power of Christ may rest upon me. He says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches. You're all right when people are talking about you. I take pleasure in necessities. Paul was taking pleasure in his need. Now, I don't know if you understand what that looks like. But, but it, it's, it doesn't, it's not normal to be happy in a need. It's not normal to be shouting and giving God praise when you're in a need. He says, but I take pleasure in these things called persecution and, and, per, and distress in Christ's sake. For when I am, when I am weak, then am I strong. Tell somebody that's not normal. God has made an exception. Do you see what he's saying? He's making an exception of you in the places where you are distressed. God wants to make an exception of you where you are persecuted. He wants to use your persecution to make you an exception. You better hear me. God wants to use when you're in infirmity to make you an exception. He wants to use the reproaches that come on your life to use it to make you an exception. He wants to use when you're in need, he will make you an exception. So that's why we can glory in those things because we know that the power of God is about to show up and people are going to see that I am an exception and I'm not the rule. When others will go down, I'm about to go up. I'm about to be elevated. It looks like I'm about to go down. But God says, no, this grace on your life called favor will make you to be an ex exception. Somebody says, I'm next. I'm next. Somebody put your hands together and give God the praise for that. God uses what people fail at. To show that you are not, you, or you are excused 
from the rule? How are people going to know that you are an exception? So when you're in need, they get to see, oh, my God, there's something on them. It's called favor. When, when, when it looks like you can't pay your bill, it's an exception about to show up. Are you hearing me? Now, God has called us and equipped us to walk in this reality. But we don't get to experience this reality because we want to. We get to experience this reality because we choose this reality. I choose to walk in the favor of God. I choose this grace called favor. Are you hearing me? You don't get this life because you desire it. You get this life because you choose it. Are you hearing me? There's so many people walking around, and they're in need, but they're not seeing favor. One of the things that I, I tried to tell the young people that their responsibilities is, is minimal when they're living at home. They have no responsibility other than to go to school and know God. But at some point, they will transition from that. They're going to step into a reality where they become responsible people. And the minute you become responsible, you, you have to learn how to do life. Now I'm learning how to pay bills. I, I want to buy a car. I want to move out. And so the level of responsibility begins to take over. And what I see happen to them when they step into the level of responsibility, all the seed that was sown while they lack the responsibility is lost. Amen. Why? Because they don't know how to do life and they don't know how to do kingdom together. And when you don't know how to do them both, you put the kingdom back while you're pursuing life. So our kids, they go off to school and they walk away from God, not because they don't love God and not because they haven't had an encounter with God. They walk away because they don't understand this thing called favor. You better hear me now. This is the reason our children don't continue to walk. They love God, but they don't know how to walk in the favor that God has for them. God wants to make them to be an exception to the rule, but they don't know how. And so they begin to pursue life without the favor of God. That's why I said this favor, you've got to choose it. He said in Deuteronomy, I set before you life and death, blessings or cursing. Choose the life that you and your seed may live. Do you understand? The opposite of success is failure. No, it isn't. The opposite of success is being mediocre. Because success includes failure. So the opposite of success is being mediocre. And so to be successful, you've got to choose the traits and the habits and the practices that will cause you to be successful. Do you understand? You've got to choose this grace called favor that produces the greatness, that produces what God calls you to be. You know, I love some of the, the um, quotes that people made. For like Graham Cook says, mediocre is always invisible until you run into a person who has passion. Pope Francis says mediocrity is the best drug for enslaving people. True Blood says intentional mediocrity is sin. He is suggesting by that statement when we've refused to make full use of our talents, and our acquired skills that God has given us. When we refuse to make use of the favor of God, we are robbing the world of what you have to offer it when you step into your place of being great. You end up robbing this world of who you are. Do you realize in this year of fixed purpose, the purpose means that you are an answer to a problem, that you are a solution, and you rob the world of the solutions of the kingdom. Whoa, glory. When you say, I want to be ordinary, I want to be average. You think about, we don't know how to do kingdom in the world. You think about all the kids that grow up as PK kids, pastor's kids. Most pastor's kids, when they get adult, they don't want to do, have anything to do with the church. You know why? Because they struggled all of their lives. 
in all of their lives. They're like, when I grow up, I don't want to have nothing to do with God. I don't want because I don't want to struggle. I don't want to be a preacher because preachers struggle. I'm tired of eating chicken off everybody's table. I want to have my own car, eat my own chicken. I don't want to be begging and doing the things that they did to my parents. Pastors' kids do not. Why? Because they don't know how to do life and to do kingdom. We've got to learn how to do life and do kingdom. See, we, we, we know how to have an encounter with God. We saw the kids have an encounter with God. Okay, you know how to do that, but do you know how to do life now? How do you take that to the life? How do you prosper in this world and not leave Jesus behind? Do you understand? We don't know how to do that. And because so many times I see so many people fail because, listen to me, there's an explanation for being successful, but there's also an explanation for being a failure. And the explanation for being successful is this one word called favor. Somebody say favor. favor. You will know when favor is on your life. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 21, he says, God says, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Do you know that God will give you favor in the sight of the people that is around you? And he says, and it shall come to pass. When the favor of God is on your life, things will come to pass. Woo, glory to be. You will not be buried. You will not walk away. Things are not happening for you. Why? Because the favor of God is on your life. And I will give favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, I'm about to help you now. You will not go empty. How do I know favors on my life? I'm not empty. I'm not empty, God. I'm not empty. Are you hearing me? I'm not empty personally. I'm not empty relationally. I'm not empty financially. I'm not empty. Oh, glory to God. See, that's why we don't pursue favor because when we transition out of the kingdom to take on earthly responsibilities, we feel the way that, that will help us to not be empty is to pursue that. And we stop pursuing the favor that will cause you not to be empty. Because the favor will cause the people to have favor. You to have favor in the eyes of people that will cause you not to be empty. So we are pursuing what? So you ask people, what's your profession? Well, I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm an educator. No, I'm a pursuer of his favor. I know you're not helping me preach. you all silent night up in here. But I am a pursuer of his favor. Yes, because if I get his favor, whoo, glory. See, there are multiple currencies in the kingdom that you don't understand. Money is not the only currency. You better hear me. I'm going to preach this for you, but I'm setting the ground for you to understand. Whoo, glory. Currency are, are used to purchase products. And when you don't know that there are other types of currencies in the kingdom that will get you the products that you don't need money to get. Are you hearing me? Watch this, what he says in Exodus chapter 11, verse 3. He says, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. If, if, if you would just get this, God has given people favor where you're concerned. In the sight of the Egyptians. Now, I want you to see he gave all the people favor, but in this same scripture, God begins to do one, isolate Moses and show us what that favor did for Moses so that you and I can know what favor can do for you. It says, watch, he says, he gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptian. Now watch Moses. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. What did that? What made Moses great? Come on, talk to him. What made Moses great? God favored all the people. And then he isolated so you can see what favor do for you. It made Moses great. Oh, my God. He says, and it says, moreover, Moses was very great in the land. Watch this. He was great in the sight of Pharaoh's servants. So Moses was great in the sight of Pharaoh's servants. Moses was great in the servant's sight. He made him great in the sight of the servants. 
You go to work with people, God know how to make you great in their eyes. And then he says, and Moses was very great, watch this, in the sight of the people. Three things that favor did for Moses. Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. Moses was very great in, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants. And Moses was very great in the sight of the people. Somebody say favor. So I say to you, God's not calling you to be ordinary. Ordinary is just a distraction. Average is a distraction. It's keeping you from stepping into the reality that God has. And God's called you to step in favor. Favor makes you an exception to the rule. So if you're an exception, then people will see something different about you. You're great. You work with them, but you're great. You bring the same paycheck home, but you're great. Do you understand? You, you got to, I need you to grab it. What, let me define what favor is. Favor is a grace that is multidimensional. It is unmerited access. It is the answer. The missing link is the game changer. There's something I want to say what it is, but I, I don't know if you, you, I don't know if I can, one of us can get it. Everything that we get from God is unmerited. And I want to say this, and I hope I can say it in a way you can grab it. But I believe that there's an element of the grace of God or the favor of God that is merited. Why? Lazy people get nothing. So if it was all unmerited, you could be lazy and get it. The Bible says we are partakers of this grace. That means there's a part I'm playing, but that means there's a part that God plays. So this is, it is unmerited because God's provided it. Am, am I making any sense to you? Have you ever noticed you're doing life and nothing is working for you? Like, okay, God, if it, if it worked like that, how come I, it's not working for me? There are so many people walking with God and things are not happening and they walk away. And here's what they say. They become an enemy to the gospel we preach. Why? Because they're not seeing what we preach. I grew up in a household. My mother struggled. We, we, we had nothing, but she went to church every Sunday, but had nothing. How many know when that child grows up, she's not or he's not going to want to be a child of God like that? Because their revelation of who this God is is not the God we've been preaching. And here's why. Because we don't understand that we need favor when we step away from the church, the church life. When we step out in the world, you need to learn how to access this thing called favor. And if it was so unmerited, then you would be walking in it without any thought. Favor is the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, Jesus came out in Luke chapter 4 and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and I'm anointed to do all these things. He said in the 19th verse, he said to proclaim the accepted and the acceptable year of the Lord the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. Ooh, glory. So the acceptable year of the Lord is the favor of God. The time that God has chosen is the time of salvation and the time of free favor. And then he says, then he rolled up the book, gave it back to the attendants, sat down in the eyes of all in the synagogue, gazed tentatively at him, and he began to speak to them today. This scripture is fulfilled while you're what? Present and while you're hearing what? Favor is here. Favor is present, but we don't know how to access it. We have learned how to access many of God's graces, and I'm glad for it. We know how to access the grace called faith. But we have not learned how to access that grace for life outside the church. How did I know that? Do you look like an exception yet? 
Yeah, we're walking in many graces, but this grace, see to it that you abound in this grace also. Somebody say amen. amen. So <clears throat> it is so important for us to understand that favor is divine help. Favor is divine assistance. Now, I'm not suggesting that you earn in favor. I'm just suggesting that you are coming alongside with favor. I'm suggesting that you're open to do your part so that the favor of God can be manifested. You know, do you understand when things are not happening in your life, what do you do to make those things happen? You got to put more light on it. You got to get into the word until it begins to manifest. Like, I know that God said this, but I'm not seeing it. You need more light. Are you hearing me? Um, favor is God partnering with us, providing help and assistance. You need favor to achieve your goals. You need favor to live out your divine destiny. Listen to me. Oh, my God. We have, I'm going to teach this, not this, so I'm not even going to. We, we have, money has messed us up. It's made us not access the favor of God because we determine what we can do and what we can't do based on money. Listen, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 15, he says, good understanding gives favor. What gives favor? What gives favor? So if you don't have understanding, you won't see no favor. I'm helping you. I'm, this is so practical, but I need you to get it. Good understanding gives favor, but the way of a transgressor is what? Hard. So good understanding gives birth to what? Favor. But watch this. Transgression gives birth to what? Hardship. So there's an explanation why you're succeeding, but there's also an exclamation why you're not succeeding. I'm not succeeding because I don't have good understanding. Because good understanding of, will give me favor. So you can explain where you are in chain of transgression gives birth to hardship. So the favor of God is what I want to say. I said all that to say this is the number one reason why people succeed. It's the number one reason why you succeed in this kingdom. Go with me to Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Am I helping anybody? Is anybody with me? Okay, thank you. Watch what he says here in Luke 2, verse 52. It says, and Jesus increased in what? Jesus increased in what? Listen to me. Jesus increased in what? Wisdom and what? Statute and what? In favor, not just favor, he increased in favor with God and man. Look at that. Look at me. Look at me. Now, here is God. Here is God incarnated in a body, and he had to increase with favor with God and a man. So you don't just need favor with God. People, I don't need you. I got God. Shut up. Shut up. You're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You the type of person can do church but don't know how to do life. And that's the mistake we've been making. I, I know if God needed a man, you're going to need a man. Listen. For Jesus to get into the earth, he needed a man. The angel came to Mary and says, Mary, behold, you are what? Highly favored. Now watch, watch how powerful that is. And, and Mary's tripping because how in the world can a virgin who doesn't know a man have a baby? And so she asked the angel, and because Mary is highly favored, he answered it. Zechariah, the angel showed up to Zechariah and told him, your wife Elizabeth is pregnant, and you're going to name him John, and he's going to do it. How shall it be? And he was punished. Both asked the question, one's punished and one is elevated. What's the difference? Mary's highly favored. 
Y'all not helping me. I'm going home. I'm going to go preach to people who know how to give God some praise, who know that I'm helping you. I'm trying to get you in a place where you belong. Mary is highly favored. It's only different. Both of them ask this question. Zacharias punished for a question that Mary asked. How shall this be? And the angel of the Lord said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And this holy thing will be on you. He will be God, Emmanuel in you. Zachariah got punished. What's the difference? He wasn't favored. Oh. Now, if Jesus needs favor, you need favor with men. Stop tripping. I don't need no man. I don't need no man. I don't need no man. Yeah, you do. You know, this gospel is set up where you need a man. God says in Jeremiah 3, verse 15, I will give you pastors after my own heart. You need a man. And they will feed you. Do you know your menu comes from God? They will feed you knowledge and understanding. That's the menu that God put out. And when people don't want to receive the menu, they don't get what God wants. That's called an impartation. It takes two things to have impartation. You need God, and then you need someone to serve the menu. I serve the menu. But if you don't receive the one we're serving the menu, you don't receive God, then there will be no impartation and no manifestation of what God is imparting in your life. And I'm trying to impart favor on the inside of you. And you're, you need to hear what I'm saying. I know in whom I am. I'm the one serving his menu. And if you get the menu, there will be fruit because there's an explanation for success. Woo, glory. If you're succeeding, you'll know why. Tell somebody, it's because I've been favored. Shout, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next. Jesus had favor. I love Jesus, you know, the, the story of Jesus in Mark chapter 11, verse 1. And you know the story when Jesus uh, you know, told his disciples to go into the city and the first coat you see, unloose it. So I just have to tell y'all the stories because I don't have the time enough to work it through. But I would love to walk through with you all because I think that this is the piece that's missing. This, we talk favor. We've heard messages on favor. And we've had, we've had encounters with God. But we haven't learned how to walk in the favor when it comes to life, regular life. I've watched people come to this church and come to our churches and, and just, just explode successfully. And when they get successful, they step out because they don't know how to marry the boat. They put Jesus on the background and pursue what favor gave them. And my, my concern for the children and teens ministry is that. That's why I preach this to them. I said, I know you ain't got no responsibilities, man. But this is what your future looks like if you don't understand the favor of God. You're going to get in school and you're going to walk away from God. All the seed that your mama put inside of you, all the seed that your father put on the inside of you, when you get to school and start maturing and taking on more responsibility, all that seed is lost. Not because you didn't sow the right seed. It's because they don't know how to do life with favor. Jesus said to them, go into the village opposite of you. And as soon as you have entered it, you will find a coat tied on which no one has set. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it. That's called favor. The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it. Favor. What he's having? Favor with a man. Think, why do, why do we need favor with men? The Bible says, what, what's that scripture says that? Uh, yeah, the Bible says in Psalm 115, verse 16, he says, The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. This is why you need favor with men, because God gave the earth to man. 
you can't disqualify a man. So we need favor not only with God, but we need favor with who? Talk to me. Make me feel like I'm doing good. I'm not coming back up here. Y'all Y'all just too quiet for me, man. You need favor with a man. Here's where many people fail because they fail in the area of getting the favor with a man. Yeah, you got revelation. Yeah, you got access to illumination. Yes, you can quote scriptures and have revelation, but that's not the favor with man. But as far as excelling in this life, excelling in the natural realm, we do not understand the dynamics of living in the earth. You need favor with both. So we saw Jesus had favor. They went and they got the coat, and the Bible says they did. And the people said, hey, what are you doing? They said them, and they said exactly what Jesus said, and they let him go. He took a coat. Esther went from the village to the palace because she had favor with God and a favor with a man. I don't have time to read the scriptures. Do you know when she was preparing to meet the king, she had favor with the one man who knew the king. See, I don't know if you read the story correctly. She had favor with the one man, that one that was over the eunuch, that was over all of the, 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 the brides to be. And she just asked him one thing, what does God, what does, you know, what does he really like? And he said, let me give you the secret. You don't have to learn how to walk. You don't have to comb your hair like all them people doing. He said, I'm going to give you oil. Just bathe in that oil for a whole year. And when he see and smell you, he ain't going to see nobody else but you. Why? That's called what? Favor. She was smart. She didn't. She said, I, she, said what are, she told Mordecai, what are you, you going to do? She said, Mordecai, I'm only going to do what he tell me to do. He said, baby, just, just, I'm going to give you the oil. Nobody else got it but you. I'm here to tell you, you got the oil and nobody else got it but you. Woo, glory. It's called the oil of what? I said, it's the oil of what? Say it loud, it's the oil of what? I got favor. I got favor. I got favor. I got favor. Sometimes you have to tell yourself, I got favor. I got favor. I got favor. I'm next. I will be the exception to the rule. I got favor. You watch me. You watch me. See, this is the missing ingredient. We've known about the favor. We've preached about the favor. We've talked about the favor. But we have not accessed the favor the way that God intended for us to access it. He didn't say you weren't going to have a hardship. He said, no, but in the hardship, I'm going to make you the exception to the rule. Ooh, glory. What did he say in Peter? Oh, my God, my God, my God. <laughs> 1 Peter chapter 5. Oh, my, 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 I don't have time to even get to it. Oh, my time. Uh, I just decided today I'm, I'm going to talk to you all because I, I got so much to say, and I'll be, I'll be giving a pieces at a piece and a piece and a piece, and I'll be like, ah. Oh, let me get the right translation here. Somebody find it for me. He says, after you have suffered a while. First Peter chapter 5, what, 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 10, 10, 10, there we go. Look at that, look at that, let me get me the right, because this thing is not coming up. Uh, all right. He says, but the God of all grace, favor. The God of all grace, favor. Who have called us into his eternal glory. Woo, glory. By Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. He will make you what? Perfect. He will make you established. 
He will do what? He will strengthen you and he will settle you. When does those things happen? After. Stop tripping. Stop tripping. God is going to make you an exception to the rule. And part of that is he's going to make you. So when people see you, they see greatness. Oh, my God. Ooh, I see, I see, I see God. As he is, so are we in this world. In other words, that problem is not meant to hurt you. It's there to make you. And it will make you an exception to the rule. Somebody say, I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. And the devil can't stop it. Okay, let, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Oh, let me do it. I need to say this. Okay, okay. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, yes. Let me do it this way. The king, this kingdom that you and I are part of, it doesn't matter who hates you. Stop tripping over that. Stop losing it over people who don't like you. Only thing that matters is who likes you. Turn to your neighbor, who like you? Who like you? Who like you? Turn to your other side, who like you? It don't matter who don't like you. It only matters who likes you. Who like you? Because that's all that matters. It does not matter who, okay, let me give you my own personal testimony. I will give you many scriptures on that, but I don't have the time. I don't even know what time it is, but I'm not, but anyway. Okay, let me give you my personal testimony. Because it only, okay, 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 okay. I would love to read the scriptures, but you understand, I don't have time up here to do that. Okay, let me give you the story then. Mordecai hated the Jews. So it don't matter who like you. Who got killed? Mordecai. Okay. Don't mess with me. I'm anointed. I got oil on my life. I'm an exception to the rule. Don't touch this. Don't touch this. What happened to other people would not happen to me. Why? Because I'm an exception to the rule. They devil better not touch you. People better not touch you. They better not speak against you. They don't know who you are. They don't know that you're favored of God. They don't know. They don't know. But if they keep touching you, they're going to find out. They should not have done that. Favor do that for that. Favor do that. He got hung because he touched favor. I said he got hung because he touched favor. Keep your hands off of me. Keep your mouth off of me. Don't you speak evil of me. You don't know I'm favored. I remember one year I stepped off the podium. I stepped off the steps and the Lord said to me, the lady to your right is talking about you like a dog. Pull her in the room and tell her to stop it. She's going to hurt herself. Ain't going to hurt me. She's about to hurt herself. You can't talk about favor. You're you going to be on the gallows. You're going to be hanging. Your stuff going to be messed up, and you won't know why. Because you touched favor. Listen, that favor took her from the village to the palace. And then that favor, you, I'm, I'm going to come back and read the story anyway. But the story is everybody liked this girl. All the attendants. And then when he stepped out in the king, so he was like, oh, my God, get that crown. And you know what did that? It wasn't so that she was so pretty. It was what? I'm telling you, favor make up for pretty. Favor make an ugly person pretty. Because favor opened a door where an ugly man get a good-looking woman. And you've seen an ugly man with a pretty woman before, haven't you? you like, how in the world he got that? What did he do to get that? He ugly. How many ever seen an ugly man with a pretty woman? Yeah. And you say that, my God. Girl, are you blind? Favor will make an ugly man good looking. I said it all the time. Pastor Sintage, when she saw me, she saw favor. She still don't know what I look like. I know what I look like because I look at myself in the mirror every day. But when she see me, she see favor. I 
I got favor. You got favor. We got favor. And it don't matter who don't like it. Because all that matters, say this, is who likes me. Pastor sent it like me. I'm telling you, God like you, and there are men who like you. And some of those men who will like you are people who didn't like you before. Because favor will change the nature of a man. So, so don't you be mad at people because the people you get mad at because they're mad and jealous of you, God will use them to favor you. Stop it. Well, I ain't talking to them. They, they talk about me behind my back. Stop it. God will change the nature of that man, and that man will turn around and do what? Favor you. Many of us have missed the favor of God because we entered into a backbiting because somebody was talking about us. But when you realize, man, I got favor. Hallelujah. See, let me say this, I'm going to close this. There is a front side of being blessed, but then there's the back side of blessings. See, the front side is you favored in the sight of people. The back side is people will be jealous of you. People are going to talk about you. Why they got that? How you get that? You think you somebody. They think they better than us. And you don't even think like that. That's the back side of a blessing. If you can't handle the backside of the blessing, you're not ready for the favor. Many people have disqualified themselves because you haven't matured enough to handle the backside. People talking about you, and so you turn around and talk about them. You don't read that in Scripture. The Bible says they raveled against Jesus, but he didn't ravel against them. But what did he do in those moments? It says it in Peter. He gave himself to God who judges righteously. He didn't enter into that. He had favor. We have disqualified ourselves from experiencing the favor of God, this grace called favor, because we have been acting like people and not acting like we are the exception to the rule. They're not going to like you, but it won't stop them. Remember, he can make a hater bless you. Stop it. Or he know how to get rid of a hater. I'm telling you, let God be God. Just walk in your favor. When they're hating on you, don't, don't, don't stop talking to them. Still be you. Don't allow them to dictate your character. See, listen to me. You don't succeed. I'm giving you all kinds of names. Just because you have character. If you don't have favor, you, your character will be low. For example, if you have money and something comes up, where you need that money. And you know that you're supposed to give your money. But you have a need, so all of a sudden, you start doing stuff that you didn't do. Why do you do that? You got character, but character alone isn't enough. And so good people who love God, some who've been tithers for all of their life, and all of a sudden they fall into a financial bond, and they stop tithing. That's not a, a, just a character issue. Here's the issue with that. That's a favor issue. You don't know how to operate in the favor of God, so now it affects your character. You have to get this favor together because if you don't, your favor, your character will be on the line. You start doing unscrupulous things to stay above the water. And you do those unscrupulous things because you don't know how to access God's favor. 
So when you don't have access to favor, you start doing stuff that you know you ain't supposed to do, but you need to do it in order to make it. And then you justify in your mind. Well, you know, I had to do that because, cause, you know, I just, I got a family to take care. I got, now, see, now how you justified it. And the missing problem wasn't a character issue. The problem, again, is your favor. You don't know how to access the favor of God. If this has been a blessing to you, come on, give God praise. I got to go. Okay.